Hi there, here is Danny and the SIG Biker Bikes. Uh, today I'm going over these bikes in different parts, showing you what torques we should use in order to assemble different parts on our bikes. So the screws here. Uh, so let's go over the bikes and at the end I'm going to give you some additional tips on how to use the torque wrench and if you don't have a torque wrench, how can you manage with at least most of the screws on your bikes. Let's do it. These bolts here which are assembling the handlebars to the stem about five to six newton meters. Sometimes there will be two, sometimes there will be four uh, bolts, in this case also five newton meters. As you can see on the vintage bike we have larger bolts and just two, so here we could use even seven or eight newton meters. It will also depend on whether it's M4, M5 or M6 bolts, so the larger bolts and uh, the, the higher torque. These bolts assembling the stem to the fork, which is inside there, the, the steer of the fork, about six newton meters here. On this Canada we can see five newton meters. And once more on the vintage Canada bike we have uh, one larger uh, screw, so we can use about eight, ten newton meters. These bolts assembling our braking lever and our shifters, uh, also about five, six newton meters. The barons would quite often require about 5 to 6 newton meters. The torque on the seat post clamp will depend a lot on the, its design. This one is pretty standard one and we can see 5 newton meters. On this Merida bike uh, seat post clamp it says on that side 6.5 newton meters, but I've been talking to the Merida engineer and he said 6.5 is too much, you can use 5 newton meters here. This design is becoming more and more popular, especially on the road bikes, and then the manufacturer will, will give you the right amount of the torque here, 8 Nm. And this is very standard steel frame, and we can also see 5 Nm on the seat post clamp. The bolts assembling our seat to the seat post, it will depend on the number of, uh, of the bolts. Here we have two, and the torque 6 Nm. 5 would probably be enough. Here on the Canada we also have two bolts on the carbon seat post. I wouldn't use more than five newton meters here. And finally the vintage bike has also less screws here, so just one bolt. We can use 10 and even more newton, newton meters here. The bottom bracket. If you have a threaded bottom bracket you would use about 50 to 70 newton meters on BSA standard, on Octalink and uh, square tapered. These will differ just a little bit, but, uh, but all, uh, all in all, just between 50 and 70 newton meters. Here we can see the bottom bracket, which is inside. We're not talking about this bolt, which assembles the crank arm uh, to the spindle. We are talking about the bottom bracket inside there. So 50 to 70 newton meters. And so this bolt, which, which will assemble the crank arm to the spindle, uh, in this square tapered system, but also in octaling system, about 35 to 50 newton meters. This two piece crank set in the Holotech system will re require for both bolts, this side and the other one, just about 12 to 14 newton meters. The bolts assembling our chain rings to the crank set, about 8 to 10 newton meters. This one larger bolt or lock ring. Uh, on the Cannondale uh, hologram crank set will re require just about 40 newton meters. On this SRAM XX1 crank set we have two bolts, one inside the other. So the inside one, 8 millimeters, we use 48 to 54 newton meters, and the outside one, 10 millimeters, we use 12 to 15 newton meters. This bolt assembling the front derailleur to the frame, about 8 to 10 newton meters. This bolt fastening the cable to the derailleur, about 5 to 7 newton meters. The bolt assembling the rear derailleur to the frame, about 8 newton meters, and the cable just as on the front derailleur, 5 to 7 newton meters. Assembling the pedals to the crank arms, uh, many charts will tell you about 40 newton meters. I never use uh, a torque wrench here, and I think I'm pretty sure I use less than 40 newton meters, never had problem with the uh, with, uh, pedal coming off the bike. Assembling the caliper brake to the frame and the fork about 8 to 10 newton meters. The brakes, assembling the arm of our uh, brake to the frame about 6 to 8 newton meters. The caliper of a disc brake about 8 newton meters. The braking cables mounting bolts about 6 to 8 newton meters. 
the bolt assembling the braking pad about 6 to 8 millimeters. The disc brake rotor in the 6 bolt system just about 6 Newton meters. The pivots on the full suspension bike, it will depend a lot on the design of the frame. So make sure you look at these numbers. Here it's 13 Newton meters. And the bolts, which are assembling uh, the damper or rear shock to the frame, about 8 to 10 Newton meters. The bottle catches bolts about 2 3 Newton meters. Mounting additional accessories like fenders and racks about 6 to 8 Newton meters. And so the additional tips, uh, how to find out whether we are using about 3 Newton meters without a torque wrench. Uh, when using the Allen key just like that, I would easily be able to, to do over 10 Newton meters. But if I put it just like this and use the, the shorter arm, that would pretty much be 3 Newton meters. Another tip, if you are using a special paste for assembling not only carbon parts, but mostly carbon seat post, carbon handlebars, uh, you will be able to use a bit lower torque. So let's say this is the 5 Newton meters. I'm using the paste, 4.5 would be most likely more than enough. And before we go over to the last tip about the torque wrench, try to feel everything above all try to be gentle with your bike so feel whether you have the carbon parts or alloy parts steel uh, bolts or titanium bolts it also makes a difference so don't over tight uh, anything uh, i'm not recommending not using the torque wrench especially on the carbon bikes carbon seat post carbon handlebars and some non-standard parts like this lefty fork for example when you need to adhere to the number of newton meters uh, which is given on the bolts there for example uh, but all in all try to be gentle with your with your bike and understand what these bolts are doing and the last one thing we should remember about when using the torque wrench when we are setting a certain torque and we use it let's say four newton meters uh, for our bike after using it we should just reset the, the torque wrench to the zero position uh, because uh, in this way it will always work fine and it will show us the right uh, torque or will will give us the click at the right given uh, torque so never leave it like like this always reset the torque wrench and then it will wait to another happy day when we use it if you have further questions or suggestions, put those in the comments. Thanks for watching. See you guys.